Final Girls is like Wizard of Oz meets Friday the 13th. They have sweet love, and this movie is the product of their uh, one night affair. This is what Final Girls is. The Final Girls was filmed in 2015. So the director, I'm gonna butcher his name, I'm sorry. Todd Strauss Schulson. Um, he directed the movie Final Girls. It is a horror comedy. It was filmed on a budget of $4.5 million. And just to put that into a little perspective for you, let's look at Twilight. That was filmed for $37 million. And to me, The Final Girls looks like a much better movie. Everything about it is much better than Twilight. And Twilight had just millions and millions and millions more dollars and more. So that just goes to show you that just having a lot of money does not make a great movie. And that's, that's directed at James Cameron. James Cameron. So I saw the trailer before I watched this movie. And after watching the trailer, I really wanted to see the movie. I, I thought the trailer w was good. It didn't reveal too much. It got me excited for the movie. And after having seen the movie, it didn't misrepresent the movie at all. It's it's what I expected it to be. It was just a, like a horror comedy. And that's, that's cool. That's great with me. So uh, what is uh, Final Girls about? So... The, the main character is Max, this young woman. Early on in the movie, she's with her mom and her, her mom Amanda, I believe. And her, Amanda's this uh, a struggling actress trying to get movie roles. And 20 years previous, she was in this movie called Camp Bloodbath. And since then, it's become like this cult classic movie, much like Friday the 13th. And as she's trying to get these movie roles, uh, she just can't seem to shake the stigma of Camp Bloodbath. You know, it follows her everywhere she goes. So they're in this, they're in this car. She just got out of an, aud an audition that more than likely didn't go very well. So as yeah, she's driving down the road, there's a car accident, and she dies. So fast forward three years. Uh, Max has this friend that wants to have a, uh, a film festival for Camp Bloodbath, and he wants her to go. And reluctantly, she goes. And so Max and a lot of her friends are, are watching this movie, Camp Bloodbath. Then a fire breaks out in the theater. Uh, so the theater, everybody's freaking out. Then Max, you know, finds out there's an exit behind the screen to the movie. So she cuts the screen and she walks through the, the movie to try to get to the exit behind it. And as soon as she walks through the screen, she reemerges in like this other place. And it turns out she reemerges in the movie. And like everything's really bright, the grass is really green. This uh, part really reminds me of Wizard of Oz. So, <clears throat> Final Girls is it's a pretty original concept, you know? So, the slasher is a pretty old genre and. So they found a way to kind of breathe new life into it. I can kind of compare this movie to Scream, how it revitalized the slasher genre. And so The Final Girls pays tribute to a lot of slashers of the past. Uh, some of the ones that I kind of picked up on more so than others were, was The Burning, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Friday 13th, that's the most obvious one. Nightmare on Elm Street, and there was a very, very subtle reference to the chopping mall, which I thought was kind of funny. And another positive about this movie is that it's actually got a good story. It has a story. Like, slashers usually don't have stories or any kind of, <laughs> no real plot. It's just as people die. That's usually the, that's usually the story. And this one's got a really nice story and it's pretty touching too like the mother-daughter dynamic is really it'll get you in your heartstrings it's, it's really good 
And so they're, the characters in this movie, they're, they're all likable and, you know, it's, it's kind of sad when they die because you like them. And something else that's kind of interesting is, so, this movie is like, <clears throat> the characters in the real world go into the movie, and then there's those characters. And so the characters in the 80s movie, they're very kind of one-sided and just one-dimensional, really stereotypical people. You got the badass girl, you got the funny guy, you got the awkward guy, then the slutty girl. And then you got the movies, the people in the real world, and they're like much more developed. They have like backstories and you just kind of know who they are. And they, their characters usually kind of, they change a little bit as time goes on. So that's kind of an interesting little contrast between the two. So one of the uh, happy surprises with this movie and something that I really didn't expect too much was just the uh, really good production value. Uh, the cinematography was really good. There's several scenes where it just, the framing was just very dramatic and perfect. It just looked really good. And then there's some scenes where the lighting was very dramatic and stylized. It almost seemed like an old Dario Argento movie, and other scenes, the uh, like the camera work and the editing, just looked really good. For example, the theater scene, when the guy is smoking a cigarette, and that little piece of ash drops into the liquor, and it starts a fire. That whole little scene just looked really good. So I mean, I was very impressed with the production value, and that's just something I, I didn't expect from like a kind of little independent movie but it looked really good and I like the humor of this movie too there's there's a lot of humor in here and you know some of it's kind of cheesy some of it's kind of more subtle kind of awkward humor and for me personally it all works and Kurt and Duncan are the ones that uh produce most of the comedy in this movie and like any, no slasher would be complete without a great soundscape and music. So in the music, you know, and this movie's pretty good. There's, um, it's very similar to Friday the 13th. So, and the one thing that, <clears throat> if there's something I would say I disliked, even though, so, I don't really dislike this, but it's just kind of unusual. So this movie is obviously paying tribute to slasher movies and one thing those are known for is lots of violence and blood and a lot of nudity and this movie it doesn't it doesn't pursue those two so there's you're not going to see a lot of gore in this movie and you're not going to see any titties and I, I don't really want to complain about that because that makes me feel like a douchebag <clears throat> it's the one thing that I kind of was surprised about so this is this is a PG movie, so you're not gonna see any gore, you're not gonna see any nudity, and you know I, I'm okay with that. That's, that's fine with me. Um, it's it's a good movie, you know. You you don't need those two things to be a good movie, but it's just kind of it's unusual for a movie that presents itself as a slasher to not have those two little elements. But having said that, I saw the movie, I liked it, and thought it was just fine you know maybe maybe if they added those two things that it wouldn't be as good a movie you know so it seems like whereas they dial down the gore and nudity to to zero they amped up pretty much the story and the character you know progression and all that kind of stuff and then and it's just that's just what it is you know they didn't they, they didn't go that route they went a different route and I'm fine with that. It's perfectly good as it is. And so that's pretty much my thoughts on The Final Girls. I thought it was a good movie. If I had to give it a rating 0 to 10, I'm just, I'm going to say it's a 9 out of 10, you know, because I think it's really good. Um, I would recommend people see this movie that are, that A, either like horror movies, B, just like comedy movies, or C, Big fans of slasher movies. Um, I really, I think anyone can probably enjoy this movie. It's it's funny, just 
regardless of anything, if you like comedies, it's, it's, you need to watch it. It's pretty funny. But if you're a horror fan, you know, or a slasher fan, then you're going to get, like, a lot of the subtle kind of references to other movies. And the not-so-subtle references. Just one little, one little side note. <clears throat> I, so, the main villain in this movie is Billy, which is obviously very strong resemblance to to Jason. What is up with this little tiki mask? That is the... <laughs> That's the one thing I found kind of distracting at first, you know, I was like, man, that mask looks really weird. Um, I've seen it a couple times now, I just kind of glanced over it now. But, I th that's kind of weird, this little little tiki mask. I guess it's, it's a comedy, so there you go. But, I thought that was kind of weird. But, thank you for watching, and hope you come back.